morning. Welcome to this week's Sacred Space. My name is Lydia Bucklin. I'm coming to you from Marquette, Michigan. And this week is the 10th week following the day of Pentecost. Um, and our preacher this week is Lanny Lonto. Lanny is the mission developer for UP Wild Church. And you can find out more about UP Wild Church at upwild.org. So let us pray together this week's collect. Lord of living waters, you save us from the flood of violence and despair. Reach out to us when faith is weak, when we are going under, and make us unafraid to walk with you through Jesus Christ in whom we are raised. Amen. Gospel according to Matthew. Immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time the boat battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. 
But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It's a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat and started walking on the water and came towards Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened and beginning to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The Word of the Lord. I feel very honored to have been asked to be here with you today to offer a reflection. My husband and three-year-old son are from Marquette, but for those of you who don't know me, I'm Lanny Lanto. I'm the lay leader of an ecumenical initiative called UP Wild Church, set on the principles of the Christian faith, connection, and nature. In fact, we are in existence in part because of the willingness of the Episcopal Diocese of Northern Michigan to try this holy experiment and because of their dedication to the beloved community, including the entire congregation of creation around us. And I'm not sure about all of you, but I have found this time of isolation from society to be surprisingly exhausting and testing my faith. Uh, perhaps that's because I've mentioned I have a toddler, uh, but truly exhausting in that mostly all of my attention has been required to go inward rather than outward, inward to my house, inward to the ever-present needs of my little family, inward to my thoughts and watching where they go. In a sense, my faith is even being brought inward, as most of us are gathering online, like at our sacred service today. During these uncertain times, we have been extra diligent with our grocery budgeting. Only the essentials. <laughs> but I notice that I keep buying bird seed. Not a lot just a little, for the yellow finches who fly by expecting it. It could be considered a non-essential item, but it feels pretty essential to me, especially when I see one singing on the branch in early dawn as the sun begins to set. And this brings me to the birds and what it means to have faith in Jesus. And this reminds me of a story from my past that I wanted to share with you some of you from St. Paul's might know the ending to this story already, but be sure not to spoil or alert for the others. So the story begins like this. I'm from here, in this area of the Upper Peninsula, but like a lot of kids, I went to college downstate and I made it a focus to find a job, a vocation, elsewhere. I knew I wanted whatever I did to be in service of the other and not just myself. But in whatever I did, I never felt fulfilled. I remember very clearly after a dream job interview, I was hurrying along on the sidewalk of a busy Washington DC street with so many things vying for my attention. I heard the sounds of some birds nesting in an urban tree. I was in the middle of a line of busy walkers but they stopped me, literally stopped me in my tracks. There was something so appealing about them that I watched them just standing there, watching them for minutes. Now, I'm gonna give you a little bit of background into this momentary excerpt of my life. So I had just walked out of this dream interview that was the culmination of years of hard work, late night studying, writing dissertations, unpaid internships, conversations with family that invested their support into this direction that my life was heading. And this was it. This job would begin a next path of servitude 
which inevitably would mean years behind walls of one office in one city, maybe moving to the walls of an office of another city. All that I, all that I thought I was, all that I had created myself to be in this world was now standing on the street corner. And the only thing I remember thinking was, I wish I could stand here with these birds for the rest of my life. But I knew that in the culture that I was a part of, that I couldn't. What was appealing about them was that they were free. So free that in what should have been like the most exciting, fresh, new part of my entrance into adulthood, I felt a disconnect in my life that at the time I couldn't fully understand. Those birds were reminding me of God's presence. The billboards, the beeping cars, the ways of this world were no match for the authenticity of an encounter with a being that is living proof that God is still in our midst. Those birds reminded me of a connection that has been centuries lost, but I hungered to reclaim. That the whole of creation is my vocation. The whole of creation is our vocation. The fruit of our disconnection from God can be seen in the reality in which we live. The burning of the Amazon in Australia, the millions of species losing their habitat, the pollution of our waterways and watersheds by pipelines and mines. We may feel powerless to do anything, but we were entrusted to care. And we can do this by reading the scriptures to see how much God truly loves creation. We can do this by sitting in solitude and hearing how creation praises God. We can look in awe and wonderment about how creation reveals God. The consequences of our failure to fully live out this calling is before us. And this disconnect is felt deepest in the hearts of our youth who are given no guidance or ability to be empowered as earth keepers for Christ because we aren't teaching them. A part of what we do at UP Wild Church is reclaim our connection to God's great congregation, roaming freely beyond the church walls. And Jesus deliberately spent time in the wilderness. And the fact that he did, did so shows us that there's an opportunity in nature that relates to our spiritual hunger for the presence of God. Between the beginning of Genesis and the end of Revelation, the term wilderness appears almost 300 times. It is a place of great significance because it is often the context for revelation and prayer, the presence of the Holy Spirit. And we, we youpers, we have so much wilderness extending from the Porcupine Mountains to Drummond Island in which we have been given the opportunity to hear the small, still voice of God. A relationship with God requires that we have a relationship with God's creation. It requires that we have a relationship with the birds. I think back to all the times in my life where I never felt fulfilled in the various paths that I chose. And what was it about those birds? What was it about those birds that felt like an invitation into a calling rather than a career? What is it about those birds right now outside our windows that make me feel that their presence in my life, especially right now, is essential? Well, they are the signs of life. God is with us, created by the author of all life, the creator of all creation, the maker of the snowshoe hair, the carver of the chocolate river, the artist of the sky, and sculptor of the mud of which we came. The birds are my reminder that I am never alone. That still, small voice from the wilderness is still there, inviting us into relationship. For as our scripture reading 
for today tells us, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. Now when evening came, he was alone there. But the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. And what does he say to his disciples? Be of good cheer, it is I. Do not be afraid. So let us be attentive now in the storm waters we find ourselves in, in this most pivotal time in history, to not strive to go back to the old ways of this world, but to come out of the storm renewed with our hearts transformed. Let us be led by a sacrificial love where our selfish ambitions and desires are stopped in our tracks, just like I was so many years ago. A world where clean air and water, species protection, wilderness preservation, energy sources that are good for everyone, and low impact non-consumerism is our primary vocation. This is our invitation to begin to truly live into right relationship with creation and our creator. For our lives and the lives of all creation depend on it. And we are shown today through the readings that even in these uncertain times, these pivotal moments in history that all humans face on a different level, that Jesus takes time in the wilderness to pray before coming down and rescuing us from the storms of our life. And this is one of those times. I remain faithful, even in my exhaustion, <laughs> to Jesus for steering the boat. Thank you all for letting me share this reflection with you today. And I'm going to end by showing you this depiction of Jesus calming the waters. Amen. You are above us, O God. You are beneath. You are on earth. You are beside us. You are within, O God. You are in the betrayed and suffering people of our world, just as you were in the broken body of Jesus. We pray now for all that concerns us. Let us offer our own prayers, both spoken and unspoken. Thanks so much for joining us this week. We want to send you out with a little special local music from Jamie Kitchell, who's a member of St. Paul's Episcopal Church in Marquette, and her brother having a little jam session. Enjoy. <laughs> Thank you.
awesome game. That was so good. Really good. Yeah, that was so good. Oh, that was, that so was really 